Hi everybody, Tom Chapman here, and welcome back to my Map Tool tutorial series. For this video, we're going to be talking about how to set Map Tool up to play over the internet. Mainly, this is just starting a server. Now, this is a great feature because it allows you to play with friends no matter where they are in the world. I've used it to play with people within the same state, across the country, and even in other countries. So let's go ahead and begin. The big thing to know first is that everybody has to be using the same version of map tools. You can check this by going to help in whatever map tool window you have open and clicking on about. For this, I'm using map tool version 1.4.0.5. You see I have two windows open next to each other here so that I can show you what it looks like on the GM end and the player end. And so if I go over to this screen or this window, you'd see the same thing, the same map tool version. There are two ways to connect to a server and start a server over the internet. This first one assumes that you have a router with what's known as universal plug and play and map tool version 1.3.b23 or newer. What universal plug and play allows is that when you start a server using UPnP, it just opens up a port for you and everything is taken care of using map tool. Now I've been told by my much smarter and much more technically able friends that UPnP is notoriously not secure. So I tend to use the second method, but I wanted to show you both versions. So let's start a server. I'm gonna use this left hand map tool instance to show you what it looks like from the GM sides. To start a server, what we're gonna do is in our instance that we're using as the GM, we're gonna to go to file, go to start server, and it opens up this window. You have to go through a few things first. Put in a username, and on this drop-down menu, make sure if you're the GM, you've selected GM. Leave this port part alone. It should default to 51234. When you get to here, we're going to select Use UPnP. Have an rptools.net alias. If you want other people to GM with you, you can set a GM password. I've never really used this. And if you want to make sure that other people can't get access to your game while you're playing it, except for the people you want to have access, you need to make sure that you set a password. For this one, I'll use example. Now let's talk about what these options mean down here. Strict token ownership means that when there's a token on the page, only the people that are set as the owner of that token can use it. So if the owner of a token is set as GM, only the GM screen can use it. On other ones, only people with that name can use that token. I tend to leave this one blank as most people don't tend to mess with the tokens that aren't theirs when they're playing. I leave this one B, players can reveal vision. This often comes selected, auto reveal on movement. What that means is when you click and drag a token, it automatically reveals any fog of war when you let go of the token. This can tend to bog down some machines, so I just leave this unchecked. I leave this unchecked as well as this gets kind of buggy and bogs down in current versions that we have. And then the rest of this we can just leave as is. Now this one right here, players receive campaign macros, that's up to you. Right now when I have a campaign macro they're a lot of times defaulted to GM only macros so it really wouldn't matter if the players had access to those or not because they can't use them or see what happens when they select it. So I leave that one unchecked and then everything else should stay the same here. To start the server we're just gonna hit OK. It'll go through a quick process and now my server started. I get this little speech bubble down here that says server started please wait for map to refresh. This time I'm going to go ahead and file recent campaigns and I'm going to open up my map tool tutorial campaign. And I'm going to go to the world map because this is where I want everybody to start. So that's the GM part. My job as a GM is done. Now all my players have to do is they go to file and instead of start server they're going to click connect to server and they're going to select a username. For right now we're just going to go with player and the password we're using is example. And we want the role to be player. If you would rather be the GM, then you have to put in a different password. But for right now, we're going to go with player. And down here, we're going to look for my server that I started and click OK.
What it's doing now is it's connected to the server and it's loaded. And it defaults to the opening map right here. And if I go down to this speech bubble, T. Charles Chapman has connected. If I come over here, it's letting me know player has connected. So T. Charles Chapman is the GM, player is the player. And there we go. I have now got everything set up, ready to play over the internet. Now the other option we have for connecting over the internet, I'm gonna go ahead and click disconnect from server, yes. The other option we have is opening up a port. Now I'm not gonna show you how to open up a port because you have to do that within your router. And so the big thing that you need to do is if you have a port forwarding set up on your router, you just unclick use UPnP and then it's the same thing. You click OK and everything else looks the same from the player side too. I will include some resources below that should guide you on how to set up port forwarding on your router. So please check in the description below. One thing to know about this, uh, if you compare this to Roll20, again, there's some things you get with Roll20 that you don't get with Map Tool. For example, there are no voice or video capabilities in Map Tool. What I'll ch tend to do is I'll open up a Google Hangout, and then you can have video chat and or just use it to talk to each other in the background. I find that to be pretty helpful and accomplishes everything I need it to do. You'll notice that there is a chat. You've seen me open it up a few times, but the problem with chats is that you can talk to each other and there's different ways and you can uh, whisper to other people and whatnot. But this is also where all the outputs for any macros and any dice rolls that you use will go. So even though there's a chat capability, it tends to get a little clogged up down here as more and more dice rolls are made. And it may be that something someone said got lost in a bunch of die rolls. So I tend to not use chat with my players. We tend to just use voice chat or Google Hangouts. Now Google Hangouts is pretty straightforward. I'm not going to talk about it right now, but just know that if you have a Google account, you have Google Hangouts and it's that simple. So that's it for today. This is just a quick short video showing you how to open up, set up a server and how to connect to that server. So Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.